Detroit. We're in a pretty nasty area of Detroit, <laughs> making beautiful glass. Anybody that comes to Detroit, it's pretty obvious that Detroit needs help, like in one way, shape, or form. Detroit's like a big city, but it's a small town. It's just rough, man. <laughs> Detroit is rough. It's, it's, it needs it. It's life through bulletproof glass. It's people who target you simply because you have a slight bit more than them, even if what you've got is barely enough to survive. I don't even know that I could put it in words, but you come to Detroit, you go around the city, you'll remember it. Detroit's been a crazy, crazy place for as long as I can remember. The folks who've been here a long time love it. They, they love the freedom they've established for themselves. It's a very, very tight family, very, very tight group of individuals who are the movers and shakers and keeping the positive spirit alive here in Detroit. Being from Metro Detroit, it's like uh, I've, I've always really, 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 really appreciated Belle Isle and the conservatory and the aquarium and everything attached to that area. We deal with summers that are 100 and winters that are negative 15. It's a form of desperation people really can't understand. I know our city economic status is a little in question right now. Some people have never gone to bed hungry. Some people have never been poor. Then some people have never been just flat out desperate. And Detroit's a desperation. It's just, it's just got something to it that nowhere, nowhere else I've been has. It's kind of weird driving through the neighborhoods and seeing like every other house is burnt out or abandoned or knocked down or windows gone. Um, you know, even in a neighborhood that's like kind of nice, it's you just cross over one block and like looks like an apocalypse happened, you know? Doing anything is kind of crazy in Detroit. The market is uh, taking off and there's a lot of people moving to the area, lots of artists, um, not just glass. So it's important to us to stay like close together. So with doing this, I wanted to make sure that everybody had a part and everybody was included and they could all come throw down and show what they do. It's to benefit the Bella Aquarium in Detroit, which has been closed since 2005. It's now reopening uh, every Saturday from 10 to 3. It's just what we do. It's Midwest, I think. The Midwest mentality. Just, just get some work done and you, you feel the satisfaction from it and it drives you to come back the next day. It's amazing who comes together and who donates. I mean, there's people doing all sorts of jobs, you know, helping out from all sorts of angles. You know, that's heartwarming and, and it's, it strengthens us as, as a group. If we can keep up a part of the city and beautify it somewhat, anything that's, that shoots and sends positive vibes toward a, uh, a good cause, it's always good for the city, I believe. I think just for the spirit uh, to show what Detroiters are really about and the things they really go through on a day-to-day -day basis, um, and they still keep a positive outlook, that's something most people in this country could take a good lesson from. And you know, you work hard and you play hard too, so you know, we still work hard. We go out and have a good time afterward or, or have a good time while we're doing it, that's for sure. So, I mean, yeah, I think it's a total Midwest mentality. Everyone here, we're all like value working together and we've all been vending at festivals together. Like where, wherever we set up, we just throw it all on a table. Everyone's in the woodwork in Michigan, or at least from when I lived here, Everybody's just doing their own thing scattered all around. So this is a great, great time for everybody to come together and meet each other and, uh, you know, hopefully get together in the future on their own. This thing couldn't happen without everyone involved. We have so many people, so many people volunteering and just stepping up. And we have a really good, really tight-knit community of people here. I mean, without Ali, uh, I don't know if it would actually come together. It would it wouldn't be what it is, that's for sure. Uh, she pretty much helps all of us out. She's like the shop mom, if you, if you will. <laughs> Ellie, Ellie takes care of us. I'm, uh, I'm way better on the phone than I am in person. I'm way better on the computer. I can type massive email, but then when I'm like in person, it can be like I'm, my head's somewhere else. Um, I really enjoy calling up artists that I've never met because I'm excited to talk to them and see what they want to do and just have them come out and uh, 
and then it's sweet to put, uh, you know, a, the voice to the face when they get here, and everyone's, you know, so excited to be here, and I'm excited that they're here, and we're just thanking each other back and forth the whole time, which is it's awesome. It feels really good. Hey, as I can pick my head up, certainly a whole lot of new faces this year as opposed to last year. It's great to see this many people want to come to Detroit. Why is that? Well, it's Detroit. Not many people are willing to come to Detroit unless there's a darn good reason. And I think they got a good reason here, and the fact that the glass community is willing to stand behind it, it's pretty cool. A lot of torches on. A lot of people have fun. A lot of people working. The project events are really good for our community, you know, just getting, getting money out into the community and, uh, you know, get, getting our, our skills to make some stuff to make charity happen, you know. It's all about the Belle Isle Aquarium. Somewhere I started going, I was like two years old. That's a really great place. It's on Belle Isle Island, it's all free. It's like an island in the middle of the city and uh, between De Detroit and Canada. Really beautiful place. The aquarium is this beautiful building. Um, it has this green, like, arched, uh, it's glass tile. Yeah, I mean, the roof in that thing is amazing, man. The whole just, yeah, I mean, it's magical, man. That place is magical. I love the, uh, just the middle of it where it all domes out like that. I don't know, I don't know why, but that's... From, like, 1905 or 1903. It's, like, the, the longest-running open aquarium in the nation. Like, I remember my, uh, grandma taking me there when I was, like, 10 years old, and, uh, been closed since like 2004. If that's if that type of thing goes away, then uh, you know we're we're missing a huge cultural identity of Detroit. You know, like everyone who lives in Detroit knows Belle Isle. You go even just like cruising around it. Everyone that you talk to has been there. Like they've gone there when they were kids or their grandparents took them there. And it's like a, a memory for a lot of people. And it closed down in 2005. Um, and everyone was super disappointing. Like it was just a, a huge shame. I've been going to that aquarium since I was a little kid. My parents had drive me from Lansing all the way to the aquarium to go check it out. The Belle Isle Aquarium, historically, it was a spot where Detroiters could go to. It was close and they could see some of the things that they'd never have an opportunity to see. And for the last 40, 50 years, those Detroiters are people who don't have a lot going for them and they don't have a lot of uh, means to go experience those environments elsewhere. Yeah, I got three kids and yeah, a wife. I support solely off glass. I came from a poor family. We'd go to the aquarium. That was a cheap, fun thing to do, you know, like, let's drive to Detroit and go to the aquarium. And, you know, and that building is amazing. You know, I mean, you can feel the history as soon as you set foot in that building. And we were tossed, like deciding what kind of charity we want to go with last year. I didn't know who to talk to, who to call. I am the co-chair of the Belle Isle Aquarium Committee for the Belle Isle Conservancy. I'm on the board of the Belle Isle Conservancy. And I was like, that's the guy I need to talk to. Well, we're really excited. The Michigan Glass Project is here, and they uh, came down here last year, wanted to support the aquarium. He has been working with the aquarium about eight years now. We just approached them out of the blue and and they're pretty good people too they've spent seven almost eight maybe eight years now donating their time to the aquarium yes a lot of time eight years is what I've been involved with the Belle Isle Aquarium he kind of um, just loved the building and was like it's closed down what can I do no one's getting paid or making any money it's all charity we opened up six new tanks from last year and 
watching the little kids go by, you know, as we're taking the stuff out of there. That was like my first real connection to what we were doing. Seeing these kids being able to wake up and go to the aquarium and check out the fish and, and, and have, you know, have a good time was, was really, you know, that makes it worth it. So it's awesome that the Michigan Glass Project is helping us continue to give back to the community by being able to be open. I mean, we're the Great Lakes State and we didn't have an aquarium for eight years. So it's really exciting to be able to have the, a great aquarium back in the Great Lakes State. He was like, why don't you throw, a, why don't you have a party in the aquarium? And we're like, you know, we would never ever in a million years been like, a party let's have a party in the aquarium and that's how it was like he was just like doing everything he can to get it up and running again their event last year raised twelve thousand dollars for the bell isle aquarium yeah they were very impressed with the amount you know uh which at that point was the largest donation from any of the projects i believe i think that's definitely a positive positive uh, way to direct the charity here we are making some glass selling some glass helping some fish Pretty much every kiln is full right now, killing it right now. Lots of pieces being made, should be able to get lots of money for them, save some fishies. It's, a it's great to see all the talent come from different uh, parts of the country too, you know, like uh, a lot of guys from Eugene and everywhere, man. Uh, oh, for only being blowing glass for a couple few years, man, it's uh, crazy to see so many big names in one place and so much talent, dude. Seeing everybody, how cool everybody is, you know, it's really awesome. A lot of local talent, a lot of out-of-town talent. I could just get all the lines ready and it's all set up. Uh, no one else learned how to do it, so that's that's turned into my responsibility. Um, I mostly work with Nia, and um, my choice for a piece this time was a, uh, a neon uh, sculpture uh, with uh, some a uh, little bit of Detroit flair, let's call it. I make a lot of like sculpted heads, uh, things like that, and. So I made a few of those and just kind of handed them off. I do encomo work and uh, just trying to make as many small rings as I can for people to drop in as many pieces as they want. Probably gonna jump in on some pieces that are getting finished up now and throw some attachments on them and just uh, hopefully help just wrap up some unfinished projects that need to be finished up. At first it started out with just monetary uh, and then I realized with the trade show that booth space at the shows, what a better way to put them on direct center stage in front of not only collectors and other artists, but the head shops, the shops who are actively pushing this scene in their own, you know, direction. I mean, a lot of it started back in the day. We had a big shop in Lansing, and we started having collabs. It wasn't for charity back then. Like, we hadn't evolved to that point yet. It was just a bunch of glass blowers. let's share knowledge, and techniques and work on pieces and you know just have fun basically you know. Blade was going around to all the shops in Michigan kind of meeting all the glass blowers um, and he ended up coming into our shop a few times. Um, he kind of th threw around the idea of us doing a Michigan project. Getting everything together takes a pretty amazing amount of time and even this year, we, we didn't have a space until that, the very last minute. Oh, here in Detroit, just just trying to find a facility that will house an event like this is a challenge that can have uh, this much power and amperage, uh, electrically speaking, for kilns, furnaces, torches, lighting, music. Uh, this year, we really <laughs> added quite a lot more stuff. Um, uh, we upped the torch count to 20. Um, 
which is already feels like we need 50. Um, we added, we have four torches set up for some bead ladies. They're really excited to come down. They don't come down to the city that much. Um, we added a lot more graffiti artists. We have 15 canvases. The soft glass, which we were really excited to include, they put everything together in the last month, like built all the, the annealer, the glory hole, everything. So, you know, it's, we're all working the same material really. It's all glass. It, it just moves a little bit differently. It, it has certain different characteristics, but uh, generally we're all doing the same thing. Um, and that's the fun part. It's so cool to stand in the doorway, watch Juan doing the neon. We got the hot shop and you got all these torches just raging. Awesome talent, making just amazing work. Yeah, it's great. It's great to have uh, have the kilns full. Like I don't even know how many glass blowers. Like 30, 40 glass blowers here. A lot of full stuff. People moving stuff. People touching stuff. Stuff getting blown up. Everyone having fun. Yeah, once they're all fired up and you got all those kilns going, and you look down the line and all the other people who are blowing next to you, it's it's overwhelming. It's a phenomenal feeling. It's uh, great to be part of. Raising money doesn't need to be limited to just lamp workers. You know, they really took the concept of there's all these talented people around who are down to help out the city of Detroit, and let's get them all here. You know, I mean, the more the merrier. It's not an exclusive club by any means of, you know, trying to help. Rarely ever do you set up 20 torches, all the kilns go in, everybody doing their own thing and not have it be a competition. And, uh, you know, I've been in a lot of competitions and, you know, it's just a whole different vibe. Here, everyone's, oh, I got this piece, you wanna throw some horns on it? And you're like, yeah, you know, and just get a taste of everybody's style and everybody's, you know, mixing and matching and just having a good time where, you know, that really wouldn't happen on this sort of a scale ever. It's great to be able to contribute and, you know, donate time and little material and, you know, a little effort for a good cause. My family's up in Lansing. Uh, my friends are the ones that are putting it on. Friends I haven't seen in five, six years. Adam and Alex being here to help do that, it's nice to get together with those guys. I like coming out to the project because I know everybody involved with it. They're all my friends from back in the day that I met and uh, it's just a great, great time to like give back to the community, have a little bit of fun. This, this city needs the help and this city needs this kind of energy. Um, and you know, like Belle Isle for the aquarium, it's an awesome cause to uh, just be part of and, and, and I feel fortunate to uh, try and make a difference in, uh, in the city. Everyone, a lot of these guys, like Nick and Adam, for example, haven't worked together in years and they're here now and it's just like, they, they've known each other forever and now that they're here back together, they're having so much fun collabing and everyone's working together and it's, it's pretty sweet. Supporting the cause is always important. A lot of friends come out to blow glass, you know, it's a great companionship, great to hang out with other glass blowers and to give back to the community. So maybe other people have a better outlook on us, so we're not shunned so much, you know. You guys do really you guys make an art here. Glass art, baby. Crazy shit. We kind of need like people to also see. Yeah, just because we make pipes and stuff doesn't mean we're all, uh, I don't know, we're bad guys or anything, you know? We're, we're just trying to like do what we love doing and that happens to be making pipes. It's just great. I mean, we're all, you know, art isn't cornholed into one medium, you know, I mean, by any means. So you get creative people around, magical things happen. Getting together, social networking, getting together with a bunch of like-minded people. It's funny how you can meet someone that you've never seen before, 
they uh, does the same st stuff you do in uh, years like you've always known each other. You got something in common and you talk about stuff like you were just friends from you know childhood. It's important for anybody in this industry to get out and go to trade shows, go to events like this, uh, put yourself out there, do flame offs, do demos. You meet so many people from, that have so many different facets to the game that might not even be glass related but will somehow benefit your skills. And this nobody's here doing it for the money, they're doing it to help build community. That was what came to my mind, it was like watching people who aren't making money do something and you get to see them in their true form, you know, people having fun, having a beer, stepping outside of their usual um, box. From the, the reception Thursday night at the aquarium, from last year to this year, I've already seen an increase. It seems like double the amount of people are showing up. So the awareness is actually getting out there from last year. I can't wait to see next year. So it's cool to come here and just use our talents and it doesn't cost me anything and, you know, turns into money, which turns into helping. It's the power of, of a team of people, the, the, it's, it's, a, it's truly the sign of how a group of people can make a bigger difference than just one person. And uh, it's just, yeah, it's something special to see and, and it's special to be part of. I, I think um, there's a common thread that runs along, uh, along through each pipe maker out there. There's, you you got to be a little bit uh, kind of uh, an unstable character in order to really pull pipes off. Because, I mean, what we do is ridiculous, <laughs> and I love it. It's brought everyone together, you know, from multiple facets. Like, we have, you know, friends from around the country now. It is a little bit of something out of this world. It uh, allows creativity to flow in a way that uh, makes you grab something inanimate, and then you see a light up, and it gets a little bit of a soul, you know? And that's part of the appeal of having the graffiti and all the other stuff and all that is it puts out a wide, much wider blanket of people who want to come check it out. You know, you don't have to be limited to just being interested in glass to come here and enjoy yourself. I feel so blessed to be a part of this industry and to be able to make whatever I want to, you know, and that gives me and everybody else the freedom to make what you want. There's no end when you get this many creative people together in one place. I mean, anything can happen. You know, I mean, it's it's fucking magical. <laughs> I mean, it, it can be troublesome. You know, a lot of people look down on pipers and, and think what we're doing is wrong. And it really, it kind of hurts my feelings that a lot of people don't consider this to be a, a, a worthwhile adventure. But uh, I think we've proven wrong with our efforts. We're highlighting, you know, what used to be a, a persecuted art form by the government that's now, within the past few years, these people, we're turning it around and we're doing good for the community. We're like making a difference, which is the most, it's the most awesome way of kind of thumbing your nose at, at people that wanted to put these people down and, and try and say, you know, you're better off working at McDonald's or something. Like, no, hell no, better off at the torch. It's all just pebbles being dropped in different ponds. I mean, each person that sells each person is just another ripple in another pond that's going to continue to spread and can't stop us. Well, it's not necessarily philanthropy. It's just want, you know, that natural human desire of wanting to help. You know, I mean, it's it's a universal language to some extent. It's awesome, you know. It's like it's just like any other art form, you know, where where if you can do a good thing with it, then you should be doing a good thing with it. Well, last year we had never done it before, so it was absolutely brand new, and we kind of weren't sure what we were getting ourselves into. Logistically, it was a lot more complicated. Everything threw us a monkey wrench, but. We were able to deal with it because, you know, we had we had to do it again. We had to do it again. It's cool for people to come here and, like, brainstorm ideas and just talk and, like, bottom line, just have fun. Tell me how it is. Not like that. No. here to make glass with my friends for this amazing uh, benefit, you know, for the, the aquarium. It's always great to get compliments on your stuff. 
as well as be able to appreciate other people's, you know, work. It's also a family event. My kids are here, my wife, and uh, I'm happy to have them here and see the creative side of me. Not having to have that shadow of question over the, the legitimacy of what you're doing, um, when it means so much to you, that's, that's really nice. It's a really strong art community to begin with. You're not working for a singularity, you know, like, there's no single person financially gaining from all this. We all benefit. So like everybody's efforts that they put in, you know, they, they come back threefold just in being part of the collective. I guess the, the level of professionalism that the, the industry is achieving is, uh, is making it more approachable to, you know, audiences that normally would turn it away. It's pretty cool. These guys are just amazing. We really enjoyed having them here, and it was a total surprise. We didn't expect, um, we didn't expect the twelve thousand dollar check that they gave us last year. It was, uh, we figured a couple thousand bucks or something like that. Them here helping us tonight is going to get a, be able to feed the fish, restore more tanks, and then you know bringing more tanks in, bring more fish in. So it's all about donations. People come down here during the week and they say, "Hey, how do we get this? What, what do we got to do to get more fish in here?" Put more money in that little bin right there, and that's how we're going to get more fish down here. So donations is how the Belle Isle Aquarium is being run. Our industry's never had anything like this, and most of the people in our industry have a, a lighter heart and are more uh, on the hippier side of things, or at least you know all the people I've met over the years. And and we all like to give back, and there's just never been an avenue that has really suited us. Everybody here is just making me feel at home, you know, and like that's what makes me even happier to come back and to do this, because Michigan is my home, even though I travel all over the place, live all over the West Coast, Michigan is always going to be my home, it's where my family is, it's where I grew up, it's where I started my career, and uh, you know, to come back here and to feel like I'm at home with everybody and some people that I've never met before and feel like I've known them for 10 years, you know what I mean? And it's amazing. I'm really glad to be a part of this. The Belle Isle Aquarium is not about uh, old people or young people or black or white or ethnic ethnicity. The Belle Isle Aquarium is is something everybody can relate to. Everybody loves to look at fish. Fish lower your blood pressure. It's a calming effect. So again, this group here coming down, um, having this event, we're really, really excited to have the Michigan Glass Project involved and uh, co-partner with us, helping to keep the Belle Isle Aquarium open. So thank you, Michigan Glass Project. It's pretty crazy. Um... It's awesome. I, I have such a good time when I'm here. I get really stressed out beforehand. Everybody hears about it. We have our fights and whatever. But then when we're here, and everyone's just so happy to be on the torch. Um, and this year, the, the lineup's completely different than the lineup we had last year, which is really cool because we're meeting all these guys. Um, you know, we met a bunch of people last year, and then the trade show thing opened up for us. And, you know, we have all the shows offering us booths and then we go there and we know all these guys who came and had a great time with us here and this year it's like we get a whole another group of people that we get, get to bond with and then go to the shows and go to other projects and it's awesome i love it <laughs>